Okay, so now I'm going to start introducing LLD and we'll just start off nice and simple with a bit of an introduction because it's an extremely complicated subject. Anyway, we'll create a new graph prototype inside our OS Linux template. So configuration hosts, several of my hosts here are using Linux by Zavix Agent. So that's the template I'm going to modify. So if I look at what I have for host A so far, monitoring hosts, host A graphs, if I filter by file system here, like so I've got one high graph disk space usage. I want to see this as a normal graph showing me how the total space and the use space changed over time. Now this particular graph is created from a discovery rule. So back into configuration hosts, host A there, discovery. There are three discovery rules that are created on the template. You can see that here, Linux by Zabbix agent. And when the discovery rules find matches for the things that they're looking for, they'll set up some items or triggers or graphs, etc. for each of those matches found by the discovery rule. So, so far we've been creating items, triggers and graphs manually. For example, items there. All these items actually came from a template, but on our Windows hosts, we created the items manually. There are triggers. These all come from a template, but we have created some triggers manually. Same with graphs, but discovery rules, the items, triggers, and graphs are called prototypes, and they're created when the discovery rule finds a match. Okay, so for example, we can look at the graph prototype here for mounted file system discovery, and we can see there's one graph prototype, and it's using the macro FS name, and that's the hash symbol there. That hash means the macro value is coming from a discovery rule. Okay, so click that, and we can see it's a graph the width height and the graph type is pi and we can't really change the settings here because they're part of the Linux by Zabbix agent template so we could actually edit that template directly so let's go into that template directly okay so now I'm in the template so all templates Linux by Zabbix agent and we could modify the items shown in this graph and change the type but instead of doing that I will clone this prototype and just call it a graph Okay, so we'll keep everything the same, except I'll change that to normal. And we'll keep the same items and then add. Okay, so there are now two graph prototypes set up for this mounted file system discovery. So going back into my host, hosts, host A discovery. In mounted file system discovery, there are now two graph prototypes. We can see them both there and they both come from that template. Now, just going backwards there, back into the discovery list of my host A, the interval for updating each of these discovery rules and rechecking them on the host happens once every hour. That's the interval there. And we can change that by editing it here at the host level or at the template level. But if you do make changes, for example, I added the second graph prototype here, we can tick it and we can click execute now. Okay, so request sent successfully. Now on my host A, the mounted file system discovery rule is being rerun and for whatever matches it returns, it's going to create graph prototypes and we'll be able to see those. Now in monitoring hosts, for my host A, graphs, file system, there are now two graphs here when I select the file system filter there. So there we go, disk space usage graph, that's a new graph I just created. So I'm looking at that for the last 30 days and really not much happens on my host day. It's not a very busy server, but it could have been. Anyway, I could create triggers on that as well, which we'll look at in the next video. But anyway, going backwards a little bit about the discovery rule, going back to configuration hosts, I only updated host A. Host B also uses this same template. That will update within an hour. So I'm just going to let that happen behind the scenes. But also if I was using the Linux by Zabbix agent active templates and I was in discovery, all these item prototypes would be the active equivalent check, not the passive type check. So if I looked at an item prototype and I click it again, total space, for example, you can see it's a type of Zabbix agent. On the active version of the template, that would be Zabbix agent active, which also means you can't actually go back into the discovery list press that and then press execute now you can't execute now on active checks the way do you get those things to start instantly is by restarting the agent itself as you see me do many times when i'm creating active items on my windows hosts and they were also behind a proxy so that was the extra thing to consider there this host a is not behind a proxy if we look at monitoring maps there's host A. It's actually on the same vpc as my Savix server anyway going back to the host again 
And just since macros are something we've just learned about, this hash FS name, just to show you a little bit where that is being created, if we go to the mounted file system discovery here, that is the key of the discovery rule. So discovery rule, it looks a little bit like an item, but it's a discovery rule. And that's the key. That is an inbuilt system key that comes with Zabbix. And we can test that to see what value it returns. So if I just test that down there and do get value and test, that's the response there. So if I just click that and copy all of that, that's actually a JSON string returned from that key there that's being run through the agent. Okay, so I've just opened up a JSON formatter on the internet. And if I just paste that JSON in there, on the right here, it's formatted that so it's a bit easier to read. And you can see here, hash FS name. That discovery rule has gone through and created an array, that's the array symbol there, of objects containing FS name and FS type. And as the discovery rule finds a new one of these, it runs the item prototypes and the graph prototypes prototypes and trigger prototypes on it and trace those as items, graphs and triggers in your host. Okay, so if I look at host A there, items, we can see there are many items in there created from discovery rules. So network interface discovery, if I go further down, mounted file system discovery, slash free I notes percent, let's look at another one and a few more, amount of file system discovery slash use space. So you can see that the item prototypes are creating these items and you can see which discovery rule it comes from. Okay, so if I just click into that, use space, we can see key was created and that no longer says macro hash FS name, it just says slash, it was replaced. Okay, so back in discovery rules, you can see amount of file system discovery item prototypes. FS name, free inodes, percent, little space, use space. Now, another thing which is very specific about this mounted file system discovery rule is that you see a lot of FS name and FS type created here. So you would expect to see item prototypes for this folder and that folder and that folder. But actually, the only item prototypes that were created were for this single slash here. Now, the reason for that is because the discovery rule also has filters. Okay, so looking at mounted file system discovery again. It's similar to an item in the way it also has pre-processing rules, but instead of running the pre-processing rule on the value that the discovery rule key returned, it's running filters instead. Now these filters are quite hard to read, beginning, but they exist. And what they actually are doing is taking all the FS names and FS types that the discovery rule returns and including and excluding everything until it gets right to the end. So it's doing a check on each of those entries there, FS name, FS type. And when it's finished going through the whole lot, the only things it's going to keep is this one here, FS name slash ext4. So in a way, it's a lot of over-engineering just to keep those two values there in the final result, but that's what this particular mounted file system discovery rule does. Now these macros here, they are defined in a template, so we can actually look at them. So we're looking for VFS, FS, FS name matches, FS name not matches, FS type matches, and FS type not matches. So if I go down to host A, macros, inherited and host macros, and scroll down. There we go. VFS, FS name matches. It's basically matching everything. VFS, FS name not matches, ex excluding those. It's from the FS name. And then it's also doing the filters on FS type. So if FS type matches any of those, it will keep them. And it just so happens that the only one match in this whole JSON here is ext4 and that's what we see here ext4 now that's a lot of information to take in you don't have to understand all of that it's just good to know that it exists and you can see that these macros here are coming from the linux by zabbix agent template anyway i'm going to cancel that and so right at the end when the mounted file system discovery rule finishes it's creating item prototypes trigger prototypes and graph prototypes for the matches that pass this filter and we can see those if we look more close to host A. Further down, a mounted file system discovery item credit. Anyway, we'll continue looking at discovery rules as we progress. And a lot of the things that I've shown you now, even if they don't make sense, will become more familiar. Because we'll create our own discovery rule eventually. Excellent.